Ladies, gentlemen, grown-ups, including turning babies, you know what it is. It's the morning after. It's kind of weird to say this is our first time having one of these after a loss. I know, right? Um, I've started to lose some followers because of subscribers and everything because I don't really tolerate jumping on the wrong video to complain. We've got certain videos for that. Here's one of them. So you can, the comment section is all yours. You can vent as needed, and we're, we're going to talk through this game. I've got my 22 piece nugget 11 on offense, 11 on defense. Things that jumped out to me the most that we need to talk about. And so if you want to jump to the offensive side, the defensive side, in the description below, we've got the timestamps. I've actually got them on here this time because I'm not traveling. So you can have that. Go ahead and make your uh, your pick if you want to move forward. But for the uninitiated, here's the intro. Welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thanks for pulling up to the channel. We do a morning after, after every game, talk through our thoughts. Like I said, 22-piece nugget. And there's a lot to evaluate in this Kansas game. And there's a lot of stuff in here y'all not going to want to hear. Good and bad. And so I want y'all to understand like y'all, I'm a fan. I'm not a reporter. I am not a media personality. I'm a fan that's talking ball with other fans. And luckily, over 11,000 of y'all like me. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this one because I know y'all are hurt. I know that y'all are in pain. But as Patrick Swayze says, pain don't hurt. It'll be okay. The season isn't over. I anticipate in the polls we're going to end up Possibly in most still in the top 10, most likely between 10 and 12. And what that means is the season ain't over. We just got to go out and make it happen for the rest of the way. And I think we can. And I'll talk about and explain that as I go through this. But here's the things that I saw in here. So let's start with the offense. So offensively, I thought that I'd be more appropriate to go with because I feel like that's the biggest problem child that we have here. Everyone's calling for Jeff Levy's head. Unfortunately for you all, he's not going anywhere for the entire season. He's going to be our guy. And so if anything, we need the, 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 the people at the top, the authority figures to work together and figure out what the heck we're doing on this offense. Because this is what bothers me. We're going to start first off. The first thing that really upsets me, the people who are anti-Emmett Jones getting a raise were in full effect this game. My wide receivers didn't do anything. Four, 19 total passes, only 14 catches. It's unacceptable. Dylan Gabriel, it was in the Heisman Trophy race. This bad game could drop him out for now. All he's got to do is put together a bunch of great games to make it happen. But we weren't passing the ball enough, especially deep. You got Nick Anderson. You got Jaden Gibson. Throw it up there and let them figure it out. We've done a great job of throwing the ball deep and the receiver's coming back for it. I don't have a problem with it. I don't care about hitting them in stride all the time. Sometimes you need to get those pass interferences or put them in a situation where it's a ball that they can go after. We got to do better about that. And I, that bothers me. So that the anti image Jones people, I see what you're doing. I don't like it. I see what you're doing, though. We got to clean up these penalties and turnovers, man. We're getting silly penalties now. Like It's getting the undisciplined penalties, the ones that we're not normally doing. These are not the ones that we have done in the past, right? We have typically been very disciplined when it comes to the game, and it's getting worse and worse each week. The Nick Anderson false start late in the game on the fourth down. That was awful. Um, Emmett Jones is going to cost you some of your race. Savion Bird and then unsportsmanlike of keeping blocking when the play is over. I mean, I get this gets chippy. You can't do that, right? We got to clean those up if we want to be successful long term. And the fact that number three on my nugget list, let me not trust in Dylan Gabriel. Let me talk about that for a second. 19 passes for Dylan Gabriel being through the ball 32 times. Granted, I get why Kansas trusts Bean the way they do in Kansas in that type of weather. The man has 19 starts. He's a backup quarterback to Jalen Daniels, but he has 19 starts. The man has played Oklahoma three times. So, yeah. Laypool is just like, you know what? Let's go for it. And the thing I'll give to Kansas in this, they threw the kitchen sink at us at 
both sides of the ball. They gave us their A game. They had to because they're pushing for something. I mean, it's six and two now. They lost two conference games, which is stupid. They lost, but they're six and two. So they're not bad. They're just not good. And they're not at Oklahoma's level. And we should have won this game. We should have closed this out. Offensively, we did not do what we were supposed to do. Especially looking at this post lightning delay. We start the game off in the whole two tutties. We'll talk about defense in a moment, but we start in the whole two tutties. Dog. We came out 21 straight points. Looking like the Oklahoma of years past, right? Looking like the Oklahoma that we expected this season so far. We just went out there and just made it happen. We score, force a punt. We score. We did it. We did everything we're supposed to do. And it was bothersome to me that we couldn't keep that momentum going. We had it. We should have kept going. Dylan Gable tried to carry this in this. When he got three rushing touchdowns, he should have probably changed some plays. But I try not to be that disrespectful. But at the same time, dude, go ahead. You know your wide receivers can do it. Just chunk that thing. Just throw it deep to them. We got to do better about that. But the three rushing touchdowns, he you can tell he wanted it bad. He tried to find ways to make it happen, and the defense was keying in on the predictability of what we were doing on the offensive side of the ball. Tywee Walker is our number one running back, nugget number six. RB1, Tywee Walker, point blank period, in a discussion, hard stop, and now he's hurt. Right. We should have played him early. Because he was running through dudes. And that's all you got to do. In some situations, in some teams, you need finesse to play. In some teams, you got to do finesse. Some teams, you just got to run right through down their throat. And guess what Tyree Walker was doing on those possessions? Dude ran for 146 yards in a tutty. Then he gets hurt before the fourth quarter. And then we can't. he gets only one run after that and can't run anymore. So this is where the bothersome of the play call got to me. And I know everybody wants Levy's head. And I'm going to tell you, he ain't going nowhere. He's just going to have to adapt and adjust. This feels a lot like what I've seen from Josh Heupel. I've seen this from Lane Kiffin. The decision to get super, super conservative at the wrong time of the game. We've seen this before, right? We've seen this on numerous occasions. And that's the thing that bothers me the most. We can't be doing the be conservative thing, especially against a team that's throwing the kitchen sink. Everybody's throwing the kitchen sink at us from moving forward. We got to stop being conservative. We got to put our foot on people's throat. That was our complaint about Lincoln Riley. Stop doing that. But with Tommy Walker's success, we should start launching it. You do a play action and everybody in them safeties pull up. They were, they were basically playing cover zero after a while with Tyree in the game. Exploit that bad boy. You got speedsters. Launch it to Brennan. He was back. Launch it to Nick. Launch it to Jane Gibson. Gibson is fast. We've synced his giant butt. Do some stuff. Launch to him. Make him go get it. They like that. Chill out for real. Get him out there in deep space. He figures it out too. We missed that on that. And we've seen Dylan Gabriel throw it on a rope. This is number eight. We've seen him throw it on a rope before. But all those jet sweeps get predictable. I love Gavin Freeman. We got to stop giving him the ball so much on third down. Get that man the ball early in space and let him do his thing. He's shown us he can do it early in space doing his thing. I won't pass it to Freeman across the middle where he could juke a dude here and there and go just like we do with Drake Stoops. That's what we need more of Gavin Freeman for. Then the rounds are fun whenever you don't look like you're going to run the ball a lot. But teams are reading that. Are we doing it? That's how we run it, baby. We got to stop doing that. I don't mind Jaleel Farouk running the ball in the backfield. He has fumble problems. But you can't do that when your run game is seeing success. Correction. You can mix in the Debo Samuels plays when you get creative on how you're running those, those um, pulls and traps and split zones. Gotta, you, you can't use Jalil that much. We had a whole possession of just wide receivers running the ball. 
It's unacceptable. Especially the way that our running backs were figuring it out. Tawi was figuring it out, and Gavin Salcha, it's hard to get a little something going. I think he averaged four yards a carry in this game. 3.2, actually. He had six carries for 19 yards. Javante Barnes still looks like he's a little hurt. Nobody's exploding through the hole. Tawi Walker's exploding through the hole. Let Tawi do it. Keep dealing Gabriel on the scramble, too. You got to do more of that. All right. Wrapping up these the offensive side of the ball. I don't want to go too long, but this is going to be a long video, so just bear with your boy. <sighs> Ten, we ran for 269 yards, man. Pass for 171. We ran for 269 yards. Salchuk was starting to show some patience on his runs. That fourth, that fourth quarter debacle, well, we should have called timeout. We shouldn't have called timeout on the punts. We should have just let those five yards pile on. We could punt it deep, and it would have been fine. We should not. Let me tell you this way. I'm going to pull back on all of that. We should have ran went for a touchdown in the, in the end of the second half, first half, right before halftime. Three touch, three timeouts, and we could do a one-minute drill. No problem. Why didn't we go for it? Why weren't we not being aggressive? I don't care about the weather. I don't care about the rain. I don't care about the drizzle. You could still go for it. We weren't going to throw another pick six. DG threw that pick six early, and that was just dumb on his part. He shouldn't have hesitated. Should have launched that thing. But guess what? Actually, we shouldn't even throw the hitch route. They're looking for short passes because it's bad weather. So you don't throw across the field in bad weather like that. Throw it across the middle real quick. Zip them. He can zip it. I don't care how wet it is. He can zip it. Let him, just do it. If that was an interception, I wouldn't have been mad. But throw it across the middle in weather like that. The O-line inconsistency has got to get better, man. We rotated Caden Green and Savion Bird and Troy Everett like four or five. We got to stop doing that, man. There feels like there's no cohesion on the offensive line right now because we keep moving dudes in and out constantly. It's going to bite us in the butt long term, guys. It's going to bite us in the butt. And it kind of bit us in this game. When we started to get consistency, Caden Green was in the game. Caden Green needs to play moving forward. Point blank, period, in the discussion. We sub him out for a rest, but he should play consistently on every starting down. Period. He looks the most consistent out there. Sexton was out there eating. Rouse gave up that sack, which was bad, but the offensive line, we got to get better. Pick your guys, ride with them, make it done. All right, let's talk about the defense. Defensive nuggets. Let's dive right into it, right? So, number one, we gave up 443 yards, 217 in the pass, 225 on the run. We're getting our butt kicked on the run game now. Like It's like every week we have regressed on how good our run defense is. It gets each week it gets worse and worse, and that's something that we've got to fix. And it's mainly because from 20 to 20, we're struggling. We're struggling with our ways of stopping plays. Our awareness doesn't seem to be there. Eyes in the backfield. I don't know what it is. We're struggling 20 to 20. We get better in the red. We didn't do as good in the red. Well, we did do as good in the red zone as we normally did, and then we started getting penalties to where people get a, a do-over, and do-overs always throw off momentum. It ruins all of it, period. Momentum is gone when there's a do-over. But defensively, we got to get better in between the 20s, in which we were starting to see a little bit of progression overall past game, weather-wise. We did a good job of trying to, but, man, late in that game, we fell apart. Losing players to injuries. Dog, number three, injuries have kicked our tail. Attrition is kicking in. And I told y'all, beginning of the season, as we were progressing and getting better, the thing that that we've got, competitive depth. But at a certain point, that attrition starts to get you. The defensive line was doing their thing, man. They were getting a lot of pressure in this game, uh, but we did not do like we normally do. We had zero sacks and we had three tackles for loss. Three tackles for loss in this game. That's not good. Now, granted, if you watch the way Kansas offense ran, they literally ran a trick play every single, just about every single play. They were rotating. They were shifting nonstop because they were trying to find the way to get the, give us their A game, and they did it. They went out there. But losing Gentry Williams in this game, not having him, he didn't play. Peyton Bowen still hurt. He's been wearing a boot, and he played with like seven or eight snaps. I'm waiting for PFF to finish, and we'll see that. Stutzman going down, didn't play the second half. You felt it. Now, number four, Kip is going to be special. 
He did really good. Five tackles, all solos. He was everywhere. My boy Canick struggled. I know this is only year two of playing linebacker, and we've seen some progressions, but his bad moments are bad. And I feel bad for him because he was at home in Kansas playing in front of family, and he did not give us his A game. And you could tell that Kansas was trying to key in on him and suck him into places. There was some plays, I think one of the fourth downs that they converted on, he was coming up to try to stop a scramble and the wide receiver was literally on the, I think it was a tight end. Fairchild was on the, was, was on the back just waiting to catch a pass. If Mason Fairchild didn't, if he would have paid drop back to Fairchild, that pass wouldn't have been made. And it, it, we struggled at the linebacker spot. The linebacker spot is where we're starting to see struggles now. Except for with Stutzman. Stutzman has done pretty good overall. He's had his moments, but he's been do- really good overall. Same thing with Canick. But we brought in Kobe McKenzie, and we saw something different. Kobe McKenzie started hitting, and we started to see some three and outs a lot faster, which I'm happy to see. Um, and he had a pass defended. That pass that he blocked with uh, across the middle with the hits that Reggie Pearson gave. God, shout out to Reggie Pearson, man. I'm sorry, bro. They got you. So we won't see him against Oklahoma State until at least the second half. Because he's got to set up. Actually, he may have played this entire game because he got disqualified. So I think he's actually out the entire game, which sucks. Six, Trace Ford. I love Trace Ford, man. I'm excited for him playing against in Bedlam this week. I love Trace Ford. I, I don't care what anybody says. I love Trace Ford. I love Trace Ford so much. Dog, got the pass breakdown. He was putting the pressures on. He's been getting taxed a lot. He can play in space so well. Him and Ethan Downs. Him and Ethan Downs are really good at playing in space. Like They do a good job of dropping back, recognizing screen passes and not getting beat on it. They're good at getting their hands up and knocking down passes. Everything you ask for from them. We knocked down seven passes in this game. Kansas only knocked down one. We had our hands everywhere. We were doing what we're supposed to do. We've got to get better at doing that more often though and consistently. We fell apart in the fourth though. It's two games. That's three three games this season. We fall apart in the fourth quarter. SMU. UCF and now against Kansas. We're falling apart in the fourth. We, we were doing better this entire season in the fourth every other game. We were getting better in the third and fourth. Second half adjustments, we were looking better. And it feels like the only adjustment we made was during the lightning delay. But we also started seeing injuries. People started falling like flies. And so when we see players limping off the field, yeah, you still got to make another adjustment. And that player's got to be prepared for said adjustment from the original adjustment and the original game plan. That's something we've got to get better at. But, man, we, we are starting to struggle in the fourth. And so this is our first time being able to talk after a loss and be upset. I know everybody's hurt. Y'all can hock in the comments and say what you want. I'll jump in there and I'll chime in with all of you. Just do me a favor. Don't attack the players like that. Don't say people suck. Don't call them names. Let's be adults here. We're talking about what y'all would consider kids still to this day. 18 to 22 year olds. They struggle. We got to get better in the fourth. We got to get better discipline and they're still learning. We got to grow in that part. Number nine, the three straight 15 yard penalties. Awareness, situational awareness, field awareness, location awareness. We got to do better about that. At all. We got to do better with that. That hurt us. And honestly, that Reggie Pearson, that was not targeting. That was not targeting. What was what was happening is if you in full in full speed, Bean had a touchdown. And what did Bean do? Be honest, like Eddie slid. He slid. You don't slide, you dive. And that's what Reggie Pearson was preparing himself for, was him diving for a touchdown. So Reggie was going to hit the ball. He also got pushed because he's being blocked. That was not at all a targeting penalty, but whatever. They gave it to him. It was done. And we gave it to me for first downs. We did good third down. 14. 4 or 14. We weren't really giving him up on the third. But then we jizzed away on the fourth. 
two of three. We give up too many fourth downs. We give up way too many fourth downs. Something we got to do. We got to get better at. I'm going to talk about what the team needs to do moving forward in another video. It comes out later this week. Keep your eyes open for that. Injuries is kicking our tail. We got to get better without those injuries. And I'm going to wrap it up. Number 11. We got all the turnovers we wanted and we still fumbled the bag. Just like that kickoff. I don't even want want to have a section for special teams. Because it's just, special teams just bad. We fumbled the bag. The Billy Bowman interception. That's what you wanted, right? That gave us everything we needed. Put us right back in the lead. Interception, touchdown. We got a second interception in a row. And then we gave up seven plays, 80 yards. First down, first down, first down. First down, first down. Minute 56, we let them drive the field from their 20. 80 yards, seven plays. Just all 10 yards, 10 yards. 15 it was a 13 yards, 17 yards. Fourth and six on the 46 was when we should have sealed the deal defensively and we gave up a 37-yard play. That was the PTSD moment, and I get why everybody lost their minds. We did it. So, that's my 22-piece nuggets. Y'all can hop in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me tell you this, though. Again, Sky's not falling. Season's not over. We're seven and one. We still control our destiny. And when the AP poll drops, y'all are gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna drop a video on that as well later today. When AP poll drops, and I'm gonna tell y'all what we need to do moving forward to do it. Because we control our own destiny. We make it to the Big 12 championship and we win that. I bet you we can get into the playoffs. I bet you money. We just got to execute moving forward. And prayfully, the attrition doesn't kill us before we get to the end of the season and we can go out there and win. If you made it this far, you like the content, hit the like button if you to the channel, subscribe. Thanks for pulling up to the channel, man. I appreciate you all. YouTube says watch one of these videos. If you want to keep it going, Richie Powers committed during the game. Y'all should be excited we're getting players. We still got elite players wanting to come here. That's what's That's something to be excited about. So... We'll go live tonight, 6 p.m., more of a session for us to just really therapy, just therapeutically talk. We'll have a special guest on, and uh, yeah, we'll talk then. Peace.